Hey guys, it's Drunken Furies, and this video is going to be a continuation of my Rags to Riches series where I go over different gear options for a specific build. Right now we're covering the Zealer, and I'm going to be going over mid-tier gear options for the Zealer. So let's get started, guys. So if you guys watched my previous video, you're going to know a little bit about this character already. But first, we're going to go over the stat points. So I have enough strength to wear my gear. Enough dex to give me max block with holy shield. Uh, let's throw that on. You can see 75% chance to block. Not into energy. And the rest of my points into vitality. I have about 1.5k life. And you can see my all my res is max except for poison. For the skill tree, I have max sacrifice, max zeal, uh, all the prereqs uh, up to holy shield, and then max holy shield, offensive ores, all the prereqs for fanaticism, and then maxed fanaticism. We also want to max defiance, but I'm not, um, I'm level 92, so I haven't been able to max it yet. Um, but just max that as the uh, last skill. Now I did go over in my previous video uh, what to max first or how I would max it, um, but I'll go over it again. So first you wanna max out zeal, then you wanna max out fanaticism, then you have two uh, different options. You can either max sacrifice if you want more damage, or you can max holy shield if you want to hit max block easier and not have to put as many points into decks, uh, put more points into like vitality, but I max sacrifice first, then I max holy shield, and then start maxing defiance for that defense bonus. Now let's go over the gear. So for the mercenary, we have a standard reaper toll setup, reaper's toll for the weapon, we get that decrep proc, that's the most important thing so that we can break physical immunities. For the armor, a treachery, it's going to be better if you have it in an ethereal base, but I just threw on the first one that I saw in my stash. And then a G phase for that crushing blow and a hit recovery and even more deadly strike. And this is an Act 2 Blessed Aim Mercenary, um, just to up my attack rating because I did notice that with the Might Mercenary it was a little harder to hit because I don't have that many uh, AR charms or that much AR for my gear. Um, so I think at least if you're going to run this setup that you should get a Blessed Aim Mercenary instead of a Might Mercenary. Damage will be lower but you're going to be able to hit stuff um, a lot easier. Now for the best part this is going to be um, the gear that is on this mid-tier setup. Um, the gear is not insanely crazy. It's better than my previous video, which was like insanely budget. Um, this is definitely more uh, mid-tier gear. You're definitely going to need some, some mid runes. There's no high runes though. So first, the weapon. We're using an oath in an ethereal cryptic sword. Now you do want your weapon to be ethereal when you make this rune lord because you get uh, extra damage on an ethereal weapon. Now what base you use kind of just uh, depends. You could use a cryptic sword like me, you could use like a, an ethereal berserker axe. Um, but I hate the look of a berserker axe, it has such a cool name. But it, it's a little puny axe and I just absolutely hate that so I'm using a cryptic sword. Um, you will need to check, depending on what base you're using, uh, your what attack speed breakpoint you're reaching. Now with this setup, you could use a Cryptic Sword, um, a Berserker Axe is fine, but anything else uh, I didn't really check into, so you definitely have to check on the attack speed breakpoints you're reaching uh, using a specific base. Now Oath is a super amazing budget tier weapon for the Zealer. It has increased attack speed. This one rolled really high on enhanced damage, 328. I think the I think it rolls like 210 to 340. So you can either get a really bad roll or you can get one like this that has a really good roll. Um, it has damage to demons. It also has um, 
a bone spirit proc on striking so you can get a little bit of magic damage in there as well so a very good budget option now if you don't have the runes for this you could use something like uh, a lightsaber or if you have an um rune instead you could make a crescent moon uh, those are all really good mid-tier options for a character like a zealer for the helm standard g-face this is a an amazing budget tier uh, helm even on endgame gear this is going to be what you want to go with hit recovery crushing blow deadly strike and strength for the amulet i'm using a crescent moon mostly just for uh, dual leech this is the only source of mana leech on this character so um, it's very important that you do have some of that for the shield i'm using a sanctuary and an akaran rondash Sanctuary is an amazing budget tier shield. Um, for only a Mal rune, you get an amazing amount of resistance. This was a 45 all res paladin shield, um, and I believe with the rune word, it rolled an extra 65 resistance, so pretty high. So we're at 110 all res with this shield. Uh, you also get some other modifiers there, some dex, some hit recovery, uh, block rate, increased chance of blocking. All, all those are going to help this character. For the armor, another very standard budget armor duress for only an Umbrune. You're getting faster hit recovery, um, some enhanced damage, up your damage a little bit, um, but most importantly, more crushing blow, more open wounds, and quad res. For the boots, Gore Riders, um, another great choice on budget. Uh, budget setups or even end game setups this is what you're going to want to go with you get crushing blow deadly strike and open wounds and it has some run walk on there for the first ring i went s something really simple just a dwarf star it gives you 40 life and 15 percent fire absorb um, with the maxed fire res uh, i'm going to be taking basically no fire damage for the belt, a string of ears. This one rolled uh, perfect for life leech and damage reduction. Those are the important things that you want on there. Um, now this, again, is going to be probably the best option even for an endgame setup just because of the life leech and damage reduction. And now if you don't have one that's rolled as good as this, it won't matter. As long as you, as long as you have it, uh, it's going to be good. For the other ring, a Raven Frost, another standard option because you need cannot be frozen on a melee character um, because your attack speed, if you get frozen, is going to go way down. So having cannot be frozen is important. Raven Frost also has a lot of other good mods. It has attack rating, extra cold damage, uh, 20 dex, so you can hit max block easier. It has some mana, and it has 20% cold absorb, so much like the... Uh, fire absorber we were talking about earlier I'm at 75 uh, resistance for cold so with 20% absorb I'm basically taking no cold damage whatsoever for the gloves this is going to be standard on a lot of melee characters laying of hands you get increased attack speed so we can hit four frame zeal breakpoint you also get 350% damage to demons which is really important, uh, just upping your damage against demons. Uh, kind of depends on where you're farming, um, like pits and chaos sanctuary where there's a lot of demons. This is going to be up your damage a lot. It also gives uh, 50 fire res. Now for the charms, you can see I'm not running a torch in any. This is still a budget setup, just with a, a little definitely better gear than what I used last time but it is still budget we're not using a grief we're not using a chains of honor we're not using um, whatever the shield is that we normally use I can't remember off the top of my head right now uh, um, but for the charms uh, let's start with uh, the geeds it's a low roll geeds uh, you don't need to have this this is just for magic find uh, but I do have a combat skiller and a couple offensive skillers again this just increases my damage a little bit. Uh, it's nothing insane. Uh, if you don't have them, just supplement with uh, some other charms. Uh, but for the small charms, we have uh, max damage AR, life. These ones are going to be really good ones on this character, or any melee character for the most part. Uh, but we do have like some life, attack rating, 
a little bit of mana, some res. Um, any charms like this are going to be really good on this character. Um, and just kind of add charms um, for the areas that you're lacking, like if you're lacking resistance, add some res charms. Uh, if you want more MF, add some MF charms. If you need more attack rating, add more attack rating charms, you know, and on and on and on, just depending on what you need. Okay, I think that about covers it for everything else. Let's go do a pit run, just so you guys can see this building in action. Uh, let's look at my damage. So we do about 500 to 5.3k damage. Really, really good. Mercenary, uh, his damage isn't very high, but he's mostly there just for the blessed aim and to be a meat shield. Now you can use charge to run around faster. I believe it's a prereq for holy shield, so you're, you're always going to have it with this build. Okay, yeah, let's play seven. See how this build works. The is getting left behind. I'm too fast. Oh, there we go. Uh, eighty-four percent chance to hit. I'm not sure if that's a plus. Let's see what it is with plus in. Uh, so we have about eight point five k attack rate. 89% chance to hit. Much better. Without the blessed aim, it's pretty low. And it's really hard to hit stuff. It's more important to be able to hit stuff than have that little bit of extra damage. Obviously, if you can't hit the monster, uh, the extra damage doesn't matter. But you can see we absolutely obliterate everything. We barely take any damage. I guess I can show this too. Uh, so let's see, 43% chance of open wounds, 65% chance of crushing blow, and 30% deadly strike. Very good spread. Uh, I'm not going to clear all the pits. Uh, you can see my map's really bad. It's really, really bad, but you guys get the point. You can see this is player 7, and we're clearing no problem. The highest rune is a Mal rune. This is from Malrins. Two Malrins. Two Malrins Two Malrins and what? And I'm gonna pull. Don't need any high runes for this game. You clear player seven pits like it's nothing. Bounce right back with that leech. Might archers. That's scary. You can see we take damage and we just heal right back up. Definitely 
definitely the scariest part about the pits is the archers. But that's gonna be for any character. It doesn't matter what you run. The archers are always scary in any situation. Oh, I didn't have spectral hit. it for the run guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video um give a big shout out to the zealer fans uh this is one of my favorite builds in diablo 2 even though it is a melee character we all know melee characters aren't as good as like the casters like a hammered in or a like a javazon or something um but it's still a super fun build to play around with with if you've never played one if uh you are just starting a zealer and you don't really know where to start i would recommend checking out my previous video where i go over like extremely uh budget options for the character that you can get just farming nightmare difficulty i will also leave uh an attack speed calculator in the description so that you can calculate your uh, the attack speed breakpoint that you're reaching uh depending on what weapon and what other gear you decide to use uh, but with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if uh, there are any other builds you want to see. Uh, but guys, have a good one.